نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك اللهم أنزه خير ما جزيت عن نبيا عن أمته يا رب العالمين أما بعد فإن أصدق الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة في الدين بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My brothers, I advise myself and I advise you and remind myself and remind you to be righteous, to be pious, to remember Allah wherever you are. And be aware that Allah is listening, watching you wherever you are. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد اما بعد my brothers our topic today is about one verse that verse include four matters so only one ayah but it's really covering four very important matters. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem Ya Bani Adam Khudu Zinatakum Inda Kulli Masjid Wa Kulu Wa Shrabu Wa La Tusrifu Innahu La Yuhibbu Al Musrifin Listen to this ayah brothers. O oh, you mankind, take your good looking appearance, or you can say your decoration at each masjid. Which means whenever you come to the masjid, you should be looking good. Your clothes your smell and also he said وَكُلُوا وَشْعَرُوا the first thing يَا بَنِي آدَمَ خُلُوا زِينَتَكُمْ عِنْدَ كُلُّ مَسْجِدْ this is a command or an order وَكُلُوا وَشْعَرُوا eat and drink this is permission eat and drink and don't be too extreme or extravagance. This is warning. Innahu la yuhibbu al-musrifeen. Another command from Allah to warn us that to be among those who they will too extreme in spending whether money or food or clothes and unfortunately my brothers I would say this tragedy spending too much in food in clothes in cars is really becoming very clear phenomena in our, our society for the latest 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. 
too many people and families they are really going too extreme they're spending more than they need in food, in clothes, even in cars, money. If you go back, my brothers, just about 50 years ago, 70 years ago, not only in this country, anywhere in the world, many people they faced starvation. They would love to find piece of bread or one piece of date. They could not find it. Only 70 years ago, this country used to have really seven years of starvation. You could not find enough dates or dry grape or a piece of bread. They tried. Nowadays, because Allah bestowed His bounties, ni'mah, grace, blessing on us, instead that we thank Allah and praise Him for all this ni'mah He gave us, we are actually denying this now. We are committing kufr. Many Muslims really are committing major sins when it comes to food. You find in one family, maybe only the father and the mother and two children. When it comes, when it's time for dinner or lunch, They cook more than enough for them. If you look to their tables, you find maybe six to seven, maybe to eight dishes, different dishes. And if there are only four people in the house, and this is absolutely not permissible. This is absolutely haram. I'll start with the first ayah. Ya bani Adam, khudu zinatakum. All you man, kind, take a good appearance at each masjid. Which means, whenever you come to the masjid, you should be wearing very clean clothes. Your smell should be really nice smell. This is what a Muslim should do when he comes to the masjid. To eat salah. Unfortunately, what's happening is the opposite. Except few people. People coming to the masjid with a very dirty clothes. They come to the masjid with the smell of garlic, onion, cigarettes, and this new ma'asim, what they call it, hubby bubbly. Some of them come to the masjid with a very tight clothes. It's almost like he was naked. Some of them come to the masjid sleeping down. He just woke up and he'd come to the masjid without changing his sleeping gown or his pyjama. This particular person 
when he is invited to attend wedding party or any occasion, there will be a lot of people, they will be gathered, gathering too many people, he would have taken his, the best appearance, the best clothes, the most clean clothes, and he's going to meet human beings. He's going to sit and talk to human beings. He will never go with his sleeping gown. He will not go with his pyjama. He will not go with dirty clothes to wedding or any invitation or any occasion. Because he is afraid for all human beings to criticize him. But he doesn't care if Allah criticizes him coming to the masjid with a very bad clothes or clean, dirty clothes or with smoking smell or garlic or onion. Do we respect Allah by coming to the masjid like this? Go to the masjid. Any time of prayer, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, you will be amazed by smelling and looking to some people come to the masjid with a very bad smell, dirty clothes. Some clothes can, you know, transparency, you can see his private parts. This is how we respect Allah. This is how we really come to the masjid with this type of clothes. The second ayah, وَكُلُوا وَشَرَبُوا Eat and drink. This is permission from Allah. It's uh, Allah giving us the permission to eat and drink. As long as what we eat and drink is lawful, is halal, not haram. But at the same time, the second ayah after this eat and drink, wala tusrifu. You can eat and drink whatever you want as long as it's lawful, but don't win too stream. Don't exceed more than you need. Don't exceed more than you need. And this is unfortunately what's happening. Look to the garbage containers nowadays. I saw myself some janitors who cleaning our street. He was very sad and crying. And I asked him, why? What's the problem? He said, this food in the garbage container will be enough in my country to more than 50 families. And this is the fact. You look to the garbage containers in the street, you will find they are full of food, rice, vegetables, bread, meat, all kind of meat. Fish, cow meat, camel meat, just name it. Throw. Some of them untouchable, nobody touch it, still fresh. I warn myself, my brothers, and I warn you, because this is a major sin. And don't think only the people who are committing this major sin will be punished. No, we all will be punished. Oh, good evening. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked one day, One day Rasulullah was asked, maybe by Aisha radiallahu anha or any Sahabi, never mind who was the ask, the one who asked the question. Look to the answer. He was asked, Are we going to be punished? Or actually, cursed 
and many righteous people among us, he said, yes. If Al-Khabar, the worst thing would happen, if you committing sins, especially the major sins, we all will be punished, we all be responsible. Third ayah. فَقُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْرِفِينَ This is warning. So the first one is order or command. يَا بَنِي آدَمَ خُلُوا زِينَتَكُمْ عِنْدَ كُلِّ مَسْجِدِ This is a command from Allah or order from Allah. The second وَقُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا is permission. وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا is warning us from not to be not to exceed you know with other meaning don't what I just referred as being don't with to see too extreme in spending or food or clothes anything you should not be you should not really spend more than you need and then finally he said إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْرِفِينَ Allah will not like, He dislike those who went to extreme in spending. So you, would you like to be among those who Allah does not love? إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ Which means He doesn't like. So if you committing this type of sins, exceeding the limit of your food, your clothes, your cars, your furniture, any, anything that you went too extreme to, you exceed the limit that you need, you will be under a Muslim. And he will not like you. He doesn't like you. As a matter, he doesn't love you. So you would, you, you would accept that you will be among those who God does not love them. When the speed does love you, that you will be punished. You may be going to hell fire. So I ask, I advise myself and I advise my brother to be reasonable in spending. Remember the your brothers, the needy, the poor. The people are starving. Not only in our neighbors, even in this country, in some locality. I saw them with my own eyes. They may have breakfast, but they don't have lunch. And if they have lunch, they don't have dinner. I saw them in Ramadan. They grab the dry bread, the leftovers. The bread was really thrown by it. People does not have fear of Allah in the street. And what they do, they go gather it, pick it up, and they put it, you know, under the sun to be dry. And then they crash it, and they make soup out of it. I saw them with my own eyes. So fear of Allah, brothers. Remember that Allah, as He gave you these bounties, as He gave you this blessing, it is easy for Him to take it away from you. أقول ما تسمعون ما استغفر الله لي ولكم استغفروه إنه غفور رحيم. الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا كما ينبغي لوجه ربنا وعظيم سلطانه. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد We have to be careful about our generations The new generation You as a father you have to show as a good example for your children If your children will raise up, grow up in a house like this who are too, they are, went too extreme in 
spending and exceeding the limit of their need, your children will not appreciate the ni'mah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ma'ala say, وَلَئِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّمْ If you really become grateful to Allah and thank Allah for this ni'mah, He will give you more. لَئِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّهُمْ If you thank me and praise me and become grateful to me, as Allah said, I will give you more. I will increase the ni'mah for you. And vice versa. And vice versa. If you went too extreme in spending, Allah will take this time of home. My grandfather told me one day, <coughs> before he died, that they used to have one piece of date and they put it into pieces. They cut it into pieces and they distribute it to four people. They just suck it, squeeze it in their mouth. Even the seed, they don't throw the seed because of starvation. Three people were traveling. Again, this is a story from my grandfather. Three people were traveling from A to Z or A to B or from city to city for three days. All what they have is seven pieces of dates. This is the only thing they can find. And one of them has his son with him. So after four days, they lost all the food. They finished it. And now hunger, they will come, they become hungry. They almost starve. And the fifth day, they saw the death coming to them. Believe it or not, what one of them suggested, he told the father of the son of that young boy about six years old, he said, if tomorrow we did not find anything to eat, be aware that we're going to slaughter your son. We are going to slaughter your son and eat him. We will eat your son. We cannot see. He's only one, but we are three. We are three. Fortunately, next day, the seventh day, while they are walking, and that man who said to the father that we are going to kill your son and slaughter him and eat his meat, they saw, they found, a female dog with three, four babies. He said, how lucky is your son? This is about 90 years ago. He said, oh, how lucky is your son? Alhamdulillah, we found something else to eat. So they slaughtered the dog with her babies and they ate them. My brothers, the one who gave us this ni'mah is very easy for her to take it away if we don't appreciate the ni'mah. So don't exceed your limit or do something more than you need. I repeat, don't exceed more than you need. I repeat, don't exceed more than you need in all aspects of your life. اللهم لا تجعل الدنيا كرهتنا ولا مضغ علمنا ولا نار مصيرنا 
حبب دين الإيمان لأنه في قلوبنا كره الكفر والرسوب والعصيان يا رب العالمين اللهم أرنا الحق حقه وزغنا اتباعه اللهم أرنا الحق حقه وزغنا اتباعه حبب دين الإيمان زين في قلوبنا كره الكفر والرسوب والعصيان اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم باعد بيننا والإسراف والتبذير اللهم باعد بيننا بين الإسراف والتبذير اللهم اجعلنا لك شاكرين حامدين يا رب العالمين على نعمتك التي لا تعد ولا تحصى اللهم اجعلنا لك شاكرين حامدين على نعمتك التي لا تعد ولا تحصى اللهم اهدنا يا رب العالمين اللهم اهدنا يا رب اللهم اجعلنا شاكرين لك يا رب يا رب العالمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأقم الصلاة وآخر